So, hi everybody, I'm uh, Daniel Trugman. Uh, I will be talking about uh, hiring junior C++ developers to work. Uh, a little bit about me. So, um, I started programming when I was 13, but professionally I started in the Israeli Air Force. I was working with embedded systems, C and C++. Uh, then I started studying actually in this right here. Um, Somewhere around the time I finished my degree, I moved to McAfee, uh, where I was um, leading the Unix, the, the, the database security product for Unix systems. Um, again, writing a lot of C and C++. And from there, I moved to Segdu, it's a little startup, also writing Linux, C, C++, C and C++, and nowadays I'm in Palo Alto networks. This is only for you to see that I've been iterating in many places in C++. I have actually been mentoring many uh, juniors in most of the places. And I think um, I have uh, some kind of understanding uh, how the educational framework can help the industry to prepare them better for, the, for work. But all this is actually not really, doesn't really matter because Yesterday, I opened a new company, <laughs> TLV Networks. And I will, be, I will be the main competitor of Palo Alto Networks. And I will be developing the same cybersecurity products. And this lecture is actually a scam, because everybody here are candidates for my new company. <laughs> and today, I will be presenting to you the job description and where others see PhD, PhD grads or masters and bachelors, I see, well, potential candidates. And, and I would like to tell you about a little bit about the job, a little bit about, oh, about what I would like you to have, and what experience and what skill sets I need from you to accomplish that job um, the best way possible. So. We're now starting the screening day for C++ developers. And um, first of all, let's talk about our mission as a company. So what do we want to do? What is the goal? So we want to write blazing fast applications. We want applications that run, the, to our applications to run on servers, to run on endpoint computers. And we want them to do this very fast and without interrupting other things on the computer. We want them to run on every possible operating system. We want them to harness the power of native APIs. And we want them to strictly manage resources. We want to manage our me memory carefully. We want to manage, we want, well, memory is mostly, mostly it. And this is why we chose C++. So this is very important for us the ability to control this, this kind of specifications for the product, and this is why we need you to program in C++. So, what are you going to do on the job? First of all, you're going to be writing and reading a lot of code. I guess that's what we all do as programmers in C++, yeah. <laughs> Second of all, you will be hunting bugs, which requires a lot of reading code. Well, Third of all, you will be designing modules and looking at the system as a whole or breaking down the mod mod smaller modules. And most important, like we all know, we'll be drinking a lot of coffee <laughs> because programmers are only machines that convert coffee into code. <laughs> okay. So, what do we expect from your skill set? We want you to have rock solid understanding of, fundam of C++ fundamentals, but it's important that, we, you, that you understand that we don't want you to remember all the 72 types of initialization. We don't want you to remember by heart how to overload the comma operator that will be available in C++ 20. We don't need that. You can find that at C++ reference or any other place in, a f in five minutes. We want you to understand pointers and memory management. We want you to truly understand what it means to allocate and deallocate memory. 
We want you to understand object-oriented programming. We don't want you to write classes because they are there. We want you to write classes because you need them, because that's the right way to encapsulate things. We want you to understand the standard library because you don't have to invent things that, are, that already exist. And we want you to understand why managed objects are there, how to implement them, and how to use them. Because this will save both of us a lot of time. And except for the rock solid C++ fundamentals, there is something even more important. I think we already talk about, talked about it today and yesterday, there are the, gen the general programming skills. For example, <laughs> don't repeat yourself. One of the most important things programmers should understand is writing clean code. So we'll see a couple of concepts that relate to that, but not repeating yourself and writing dry code is one of those concepts. Keeping it simple, stupid. <laughs> is another principle. As, as long as the code is simple and I can understand it, and I can understand not only my code, but my companion's code, and I can look at a piece of code I've never seen before and, and hunt bugs in it or expand it, it will help me. And we have to keep our code efficient and, again, concise. We don't want to write, well, not useless, but we don't want to over-design modules. We mo want modules to be um, as close as possible to the needs, but are to leave them extensible ex for future users. We want you to understand what single responsibility means. We want, we talked about classes. We want a class to be uh, maybe a module or, or part of a module, but have a single responsibility. If a class is called, I don't know, file, file finder, we don't want it to read files. We want everything to be understandable from, from one side and reusable. We want, again, about classes, we want classes to encapsulate things. We want to keep APIs clean. We spoke about that as well. We want classes to leave the implementation behind the scenes. We don't want and don't need to see those things. When I write a good API, other people who use it don't need to know how I implemented it. They need to know what they can do what are the constraints and the rules, but they don't, know, don't need to know if I open the file one way or another, or do I keep it open for the long, long run. We want, we want you to understand modularity. We want to, you to reuse code. We want you to write one piece of code that others can then reuse and use for many years to come. We want to write, maybe, maybe that's, that's the most important one for me. I think that's, that's the, the point I found most well, crucial when working with, with the developers that are just now starting to work on bigger projects. When you demand that someone writes code that is 100% testable, I mean like coverage ratio, ratios, tools, the automatic, automat automation tools that can check the coverage of your tests, and you demand 100% 100 co coverage, they, are, they can't write code that has um, like spaghetti code. Why? Because then they see that they, don't, they can't test the internal implementations. And then they say, okay, I have to test this, that's mean, that means I have to break it down into smaller modules. I have to take it outside. I have to um, see how I clearly define things. So if there's one thing you take from here, <laughs> that's this demand. 
as far as I, well, at least in my opinion. Design patterns. Well, this is not really a strict demand. I don't think every programmer has to know all the design patterns. But when you read code, you have to be, you have to like, things have to click for you. When you see something that a different developer intended to do, you have to understand his intentions. You have to, you can recognize, recognize it and make your own life a lot, of, a lot much easier. And that's also, it's the last rule for me, but um, it's, well, everything connects to it, yeah? The rule of 90-10, it's not very clear, but can, can anyone guess what, what, what do we do 90% of the time and what do we do 10% of the time? 90% of the time you work on code that doesn't work. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, it's, <laughs> it's almost that. 90% of the time we read code, okay? We read code. Even the most experienced developer reads code most of the time because he wants to know what he, before you write one line, you have to understand all the 100 lines around it. And if I spend some extra minutes or extra hours writing my code to be clearer and more and well, easier and nicer for the one that follows me or the one who works with me, He'll be, he'll be having the best time. So, except, well, this sums up, this sums up the, um, the important requirements from developers, but there is a slight, like, I'd say bonus attributes that a developer can have that will help him and us. So, the core guidelines. In the last few years, when the committee started writing the newest, uh, the working on the newest standards, they understood that people write C++, but not the way they intended, intended, intended them to do that. So they decided to write uh, articles or uh, uh, like a guide that says how C++ should be written. When should you use those three ampersands and the seven uh, asterisks? And, and knowing and understanding how the language was intended, oh, well, how the creators intended you to use the language might really help you design better code. Optimizing code. Well, you, most of the people working on C++ projects don't really have to optimize code on a daily basis, but optimizing code interacts and integrates very well into the concept of analyzing program. If I know how to optimize my code, meaning not really writing better code, but having a program, running it, and understanding what are the bottlenecks or um, what are the heat zones or understanding where I do extra copies or uh, where I could use move semantics. It can really help you uh, think of those scenarios when writing. You well, this is kind of obvious. Um, if someone knows the newer standards, he can have nice ideas. Well, boost implemented Many of the features in C++11 for even for those who are working with C++ 98. If you're familiar with this, you can bring it to your team, even you, if you're working with older compilers and stuff. No, that's always a, a big plus. Uh, memory diagnostics. If you can, if, if you tell someone, well, let's hook malloc on free and see what happens and how many allocations we do. And he understands you <laughs> and stays in the room, <laughs> uh, then that's a good sign. Because um, it's really hard, but again, it's very really important. Uh, multi threading, again, not a prerequisite of someone who just finished, 
finish his education. You can learn that, but if someone is open-minded and he wants to know more and he goes to the books or tries to write something himself, is is a great achievement by its own. And I think, I, I don't know, I didn't do this on purpose, but again, I saved the best for last. If a person comes to his first place of work, like to, in, to an interview, and says, well, I have a GitHub with three projects or even one project that I wrote in my, during my own free time, because it just, I just like it. It says, it says so much about him. And it's for us, or for me as a recruiter, it's, it says a lot more than having someone uh, getting a an, an 90 or 100 in his exam in the, cor in the programming course. Um, well, that's actually it. And uh, if I'd have to point pinpoint one thing is that when we study, teach, or enhance our knowledge in programming, the language is a framework which you have to know well. But the, lang the progr programming as a concept is something that is usually even more important especially when you're integrating in a, a big group of people, large code base, and um, we have to remember that. That's it. <laughs> Questions? Yeah. How about touch typing and English skills? That's a, that's a very good question. Um, touch typing, no. I've met people who type like uh, one keystroke in a second, in a minute, or then, yeah. And, uh, and, uh, yeah, uh, and, and they wrote better code, and, uh, and every line they wrote was worth like 10 other lines that a different person wrote. They think well between charts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, so, uh, like typing is not a not a prerequisite. English, I think, I think yeah. Today English, like having enough, uh, like your level of English has to be high enough so you can read and write. You you ha you have to read technical documentation without any difficulty, and writing well you have to be able to write code. But if someone can write emails in English because it's harder for him. I think that's not a deal breaker. Yeah. Just you know, writing English and we, it would not, would not be the best English, but yep. it would be understandable, and that's fine. Yeah, and in the end, they, they become better as well. Yeah. yeah. Uh, how does uh, your interview look like? Uh, well, because of I've been Just interviewing in, in diff no in, in <laughs> I've been interviewing in many different companies, and every company has its policies. Mm -hmm. um, I mean <laughs> in my new company, I, I think, I think an interview always begins with. Uh, well, nowadays, especially when you know, find good people is also very hard. We start with the, first of all introducing the company, what we are, the person is actually going to do. Uh, then we uh, we we are very interested in hearing what this person has done in the past, even if he, if he's a senior or a junior. We want to know what kind of coding experience he had. If he's fresh from the, from the educational um, uh, fr like, uh, yeah, institutions, then we'd like to know if he, what he wrote in his final project or something like that, or his personal projects, which are very important. And uh, then we, I don't like the, the algorithm questions. More I, I like the design questions uh, and um, if it's a writing test, so it should be even pseudocode, because people don't write very well with pen and paper, uh, and no need to compile it, but uh, to see how the person thinks, not how he clicks the keyboard. You mentioned that knowing uh, C++ standards, knowing mm. the new features of C++ is a bonus or is important? 
how do you check that? Uh, so we, we can, we can, if he ever wrote something in C++ and his, um, maybe he did work somewhere as a student or something like that. Yeah, so we, we actually, we talk with him. We would ask when is a good use case for such a feature. Um, for example, uh, we, we can ask about the difference between shared PTR and unique PTR. For if someone says he worked with them or if someone m mentions that he knows what those are. Um, uh, this kind of questions. Oh, oh, thanks. <laughs>